Hello, and welcome to the SharePoint Framework at JavaScript Special Interest Group Biweekly Sync. It is December 17th. This is our last meeting of 2020. So welcome all of you. I am Patrick Rogers and excited to bring you another great agenda for the call here today. So we've got updates on SharePoint Framework, updates on the Patterns and Practices program. We've got new community sample updates. We'll do our picture time. And we've got two great demos today. The first from Rabia on building a Microsoft Teams Me experience. And Frank Cornu introducing the PNP Search Web Parts version 4. So excited to see both of those shortly uh, here in the call. But first, let's get through some of the starter stuff here. So often we get asked, how can you participate more? Opportunities to participate. We got demos, demos, demos. Love to have you demo on the call. So if you've got a web part, application customizer, really anything SPFX related, or of course anything uh, from the Patterns and Practices program, or ideally both, would love to have you do those demos in the call. So whoever you are, wherever you are, please reach out. Would love to get your demos booked. We are sometimes booked out, uh, you know, two or three calls into the future, but never fear, we will get you scheduled in and we'll love to host your demo. I think that, uh, and we'll continue to say, I think that's the, one of the best parts of these calls is seeing the great stuff all of you out there in the community are building. You can also contribute on GitHub. That could take the form of reporting issues. We also, of course, welcome pull requests. Pull requests are a great way if you have a little change you want to see or a big change uh, to get that in a little bit faster. Uh, absolutely love those uh, and to get those in. We get a lot of uh, we're seeing a lot of great first-time contributors come in recently, uh, which is fantastic. So thank you to all of you uh, for making those changes and making everything better for everyone. And of course, you can also help out with issues and questions. If you see something you happen to know the answer to, please do jump in and uh, let your voice be heard. Likewise, you can provide feedback on all of the PNP things. So how are all these calls that we're doing? How are our documentation? Uh, where can we help? And positive feedback is okay too, because if we're doing something you like, we could always do maybe a little bit more of it. So just let us know how things are going and we'll do our best to continue to improve the program over time. Now our Pageo links, so we have developer videos, which are focused on specific developer uh, scenarios or tasks, maybe creating a web part, maybe setting up uh, graph connections, maybe uh, doing different tasks around uh, pages, provisioning, those sorts of things are gonna be in the developer focused videos. And then we also have the community videos, which are typically the recordings of these community calls and other community events. It's a great resource if you happen to miss a week uh, of this call or any of the other calls, great way to catch up on what's been going on. Open source, we've got uh, across uh, these sort of programs or friends of PMP, we've got SharePoint, PMP, Office Dev, and Microsoft Graph all have uh, open source uh, GitHub organizations, and all of those welcome your feedback, welcome your participation, and you are encouraged to check all four of those out. Uh, tons of great material, tons of great samples, tons of great resources across those four places. Um, obviously SharePoint for SharePoint, PNP for PNP, Office Dev for Office Dev stuff, and then all the Microsoft Graph stuff can be found at github.com slash Microsoft Graph. Sample galleries, we've got samples for SPFX web parts, extensions, list formatting, and teams. Do encourage you to check those out. Like I've said before, that's the first place I go when I have a problem to solve is to go see how other folks are doing it, get some great ideas there. Encourage you to do the same. But all of those are a lot of links to remember. So the one link you really need to recall, aka.ms slash m365 PNP is the landing page for the Microsoft Patterns, Microsoft SharePoint Patterns and Practices program. And that gives you links out to all of our different uh, program offerings, all of our videos, all of our libraries and resources and tooling. Uh, it's all linked from there and all explained from there. So do uh, check out aka.ms m365 PNP. You can also check out the SharePoint framework documentation at aka.ms slash SPFX. We'll get you all of the developer docs related to SharePoint framework. Our next community call is actually gonna be next year on the 7th of January. Can you believe it? 2021, flying cars will all be delivered in just a couple weeks. 24th of December, we're gonna be canceling that, of course, and 31st of December, we're gonna be canceling that as well so that everybody uh, on the core team and all of you can enjoy some time off for the holidays. Whatever you may be celebrating in your neck of the woods, encourage you to take some time off, relax, recharge, and uh, maybe catch up on some missed community call videos if you uh, miss us, but we will see you back in January. So thank you all. I just wanna take the opportunity to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support. Great stuff, great community work from everybody this year in 2020. It's one of the real bright spots of the year for me. And uh, wanna thank all of you for your participation and being part of what we're building. 
And with that, I will hand things over to David. Thank you, Patrick. Well, for those that are new on the call and new to the community, it's good to know that the Patterns and Practices initiatives are completely inclusive and open source, which means that we welcome all sorts of contributions as well as taking advantage of using the resources. But we know that sometimes using as well as contributing can come with a little bit of a barrier to understanding how to do all of that. Things like interacting with GitHub, et cetera, can be a little frustrating and intimidating. So the Sharing is Caring initiative is here to provide you sessions that will walk you through through using hands-on guidance opportunities. We will work along with you in making things like your first time ever GitHub contribution. If you'd like to contribute to uh, community docs, start using the SPFX samples. We'll show you tips and tricks on using NVM to assist with that and a whole host of other things. Our newest topics are SPFX developer workstation setup. So if you're really new to development and want to see what the essentials recommended optional tools are, join in on that session. And then starting in January, we're kicking off some AMAs. Now, these are going to be thematic topical AMAs, which means that each AMA will be dedicated to a different PNP initiative. We'll have the subject matter experts and the owners of those initiatives present for you to ask any and all questions you'd like to ask about that initiative. And then that topic will change each month. So we'll start out with community docs in January and then move into one of the other PNP initiatives as we go into the future months. Great opportunity. We experienced a little bit of that open office hours yesterday on the watch party. And I think the real the community really loved it. So it's a great opportunity for us all to continue to collaborate together aka.ms forward slash sharing is caring is where you can learn more. As Patrick mentioned, the next two weeks are clear to give everyone an opportunity to relax and rest and spend time with family. And we're in the process of scheduling January events. So keep an eye out there. And we want to thank everybody and look forward to seeing you in a session soon. Patrick, back to you. Great. Thanks, David. And uh, these have been fantastic sessions. We've seen awesome feedback from these and seen a lot of first-time contributors come out of these sessions. So if you're looking for a great way to get started um, and learn a little bit, make some connections, sharing is caring sessions are fantastic. I encourage everybody, if you'd like to check those out. And now I'll pass things over to Vesa for our SharePoint framework updates. Cool. So it's quickly just recapping uh, the growth is still there. We are growing, which is actually quite strange. We're hitting on the mid uh, December, but we still did the all time highest uh, SharePoint framework day to day usage on the Mondays of third party extensibility worldwide, which is quite insane. The growth curve this autumn has been just out of this world. What we're expecting to happen now is that for the following weeks, things will settle down slightly and then we'll get back on the growth curve after that. So in here, based on feedback, which we got from last week uh, in multiple different channels, and the social media and all of that, we wanted to be slightly more specific. So we're looking into releasing 1.12 uh, in January. Um, and first, uh, and in that one, we're looking into have a slightly more insights on the web part and the way the web part is being hosted. So as an example, the web part can request, what is my wife? And then based on the wife of the web part, it can actually behave and render itself slightly differently, all of this kind of things. Uh, the other thing, which is a big thing, is that we will support complex Microsoft Teams solution, SPFX solution. That really means that you can actually embed uh, your own manifest, so Microsoft Teams manifest inside of the SPPK file. So you can basically then have a much more complicated manifest uh, for the solutions which are targeted for uh, Microsoft Teams. And then uh, we're looking into also having potentially already in 1.12 um, a server side change is related on automatic Microsoft Teams solution sync. So whenever there's a solution in SPFX, which will be uh, contains Microsoft Teams solutions, it will be automatically synced to the Microsoft Teams app catalog. So it will be automatically available without any complex, let's say, syncing or manual steps uh, over there. Um, and then we're looking into having 1.13 and 1.14 uh, within the spring 2021. So there, there will be a lot of actually updates uh, in pipeline because of the 2020 year being slightly more, slightly complex for everybody. We haven't had too many updates and too many releases this year, but we're getting back on track on that. Now, a lot of, lot of also Teams improvements coming up. Uh, store acquisition is being planned on, so be, being able to target SPFX solutions, uh, which are only for Microsoft Teams and available for Microsoft Teams Store, and also building meetings. Uh, uh, meetings extensibility for Microsoft Teams using SharePoint framework. It, it would be quite a natural thing. We're looking into hopefully getting that one in 1.12, potentially 1.13. So a lot of a lot of stuff getting here. We also have a new team in uh, which is now uh, focusing on our store and modernizing the store end to end and the app catalog end to end. So we're finally getting rid of all of the classic experiences related on adding 
behavior and, and all of that. So making sure that people can actually find what is Chip and Store and how to get stuff on things. And one of the things which we've been getting a lot of feedback is that we need to be better on the communication. So basically, what are the changes and improvements? What are we introducing um, also in a blog post format? So not just covering them bi-weekly in this course, but also being super structural on the blog post uh, area. And we're starting that starting from January. Uh, so we already have a decisions related on that one. But thank you everybody for feedback related on these things. And and that's all from me for now. So turn back to you, Patrick. Great, thank you, Vesa, for those fantastic updates. And now we're gonna move over to the PMPJS client side libraries with Julie. Hey, thank you, Patrick. Um, so we released 2.0.13. We did that on Monday. So that is out in the world. We have lots and lots of bug fixes as usual. Uh, with some documentation updates. We also added MSAL auth for local dev and test stuff. So that means that instead of using the add-in model for testing, you can now use an MSAL authentication. So that makes testing a little bit more simple. We also have, again, some more taxonomy updates for those beta endpoints. And then again, to remind everyone, we have the 2.1.0 beta release. We've been working hard on that. We are now including Node 15 Webpack 5 uh, module resolution support in there. So for all the ESM module people in Node, you uh, really would love it if you could test that out because we are targeting that release for January. So testing now will help make sure that that's a, a great release. It is a big change. So any testing we can get will really help us out. Please direct all your feedback to the issues list and certainly follow M365 PMPJS on Twitter for all the updates that are going on. And that's all I have. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. I will just echo what Julie said. Please do test out that beta for us. It uh, We literally touched every file in the project to make changes for the, the module resolution stuff. So would love help testing that. So CLI for Microsoft 365. Uh, so release the new beta 3.4 with uh, logging and using base 64 encoded certificates, auto calculating certificate thumbprints, support for using passwordless PFX certificates, support for specifying app ID and tenant in options, sped things up, some bug fixes, and more. So great tool to have in your tool belt, available natively in the Azure Cloud Shell. You can always install the latest beta with npm install dash g at pmp slash cli dash Microsoft 365 at next. Certainly encourage you to check out the CLI that continues to grow and get better every week. And that's a big place. We're seeing a lot of people contribute, which is fantastic. Love to see that. Love to see the participation around the CLI and see that continue to grow and get better. And with that, we'll go to the reusable SPFX controls. So the React controls 230 is out with a dashboard control for Microsoft Teams, toolbar control for Teams, a web part title updated to fix uh, some styling issues and some various other fixes. Those again are the controls designed to be used within the body of your web parts or application customizers. The React controls 121, which are the uh, ones that can be used for on-premises, have some updates as well. So list view, drag and drop, a taxonomy picker, error message improvement, and some rich text hyperlink fixes. Uh, so great to see the work continue on that as well for folks uh, developing on-premises SharePoint. And then the React property controls 220 have some new things as well. New teams picker, property pane control, and localization fixes. Want to thank all our contributors here as well. We're seeing uh, increased contributions across all of our things, and that's fantastic to see. I want to say thank you to everyone everyone who's helping us out. It's really massive and really helps get things going. Now, the PNP SPFX generator, great tool. If you haven't checked this out, it's uh, built on top of the out-of-the-box Microsoft SharePoint Framework generator. So you get a quote-unquote real SharePoint Framework project with just a bunch of enhanced options to get your project set up using a bunch of frameworks that uh, aren't available in the out-of-the-box one. So there's a Microsoft Graph Toolkit support added, which is fantastic to see and great to see the Graph Toolkit continue to grow and get better. They just had their 2.0 release. So uh, another thing to check out as well is the Graph Toolkit. Uh, issues with AngularJS and then uh, working on Angular support, uh, getting in that as well. Working on source map support, uh, Angular 11 updates, some improvements for Vue and Babylon JS are all things in the future. So do check out as well the PNP SPFX generator to give you some great ways to, to set up your project in a nice standard fashion using options not available in the out-of-the-box stuff. And for the modern search, I believe 
Frank is working on the V4, and we're adding more and more stuff to have feature parity with version 3. And for those who's been wondering, the version 3 docs are now back on uh, GitHub IO, so you can still browse uh, the documentations. We'll continue to support version 3 and do bug fixes, but we will not add any new features to version 3. So that's uh, sort of why we switched the docs to be version 4 as the default. That's it. Okay, that's the PMP Modern Search updates. Thank you for that. And we're actually going to see a demo of that today, uh, which I'm very excited to see. And now the updated samples, Hugo. Thank you, Patrick. So the SPFX samples are two repositories where you can uh, find great examples of how to create extensions and SPFX web parts. This is the updates for the last two weeks uh, from you know, old contributors, but also we have a lot of new contributors, and I love the fact that we constantly have new contributors that are helping. So I've updated the chart control to SPFX 11 and all the latest PMP uh, reusable controls. Abderrahman Mujahid has updated the calendar as well as the list form web part where there used to be a limitation of 100 items in lookups, so he's fixed that. Swami Nathan has updated the PMP controls sample. Uh, and then we have a new web part from Rabia Williams that shows you how you can do a simple implementation of target audience using a generic control. And we have a new feedback web part from Perry Kankem. So those are all the last updates for the last two weeks. If you have any ideas or suggestions for web parts, please don't hesitate to go to aka.ms slash spfx dash web parts. Thanks to everyone who contributed. Back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Thank you, Hugo. And love seeing these samples continue to grow and grow and grow and get better. Another testament to all the great work by all of you out there in the community. And now optional picture time. So if you're interested in turning on your cameras and being part of our optional picture time, please do that. Oh, somebody um, else has started sharing. No, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, that's you. Patrick. All good. I, yeah, I was just All being <laughs> practical. Uh, let's wait one more second to get the full house. There's 50 seats on the on the video feed, and I hopefully will. Yeah, now it's getting better, better, and I will hit the record. So I will actually do a video recording of this one because then we can get a GIF animation. That's always cool. So let's actually do some waving, and I will share the GIF again in the <laughs> in the YouTube channel. This is really cool to see all of the people again. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Let's actually move on to the demos so we don't run out of time. Thank you, everybody. Brilliant. All right. Awesome stuff. From there, I'm going to let Rabia just go ahead and take over the presentation if you're ready to go, Rabia. Yeah, thanks so much, Patrick. I'm just going to share my screen. So this is going to be super, super quick. So this is the me experience personal tab that I built, which is now in the Teams repo um, in for PNP. So this is based off on the article that Baltic released a couple of months back on creating a me experience, building a personal Teams app. And there was absolutely no sample to back this article, which is which was something that I know a few folks who are asking in our chats as well. So what I did was I went ahead and developed this uh, SPFX personal app it has three tabs planning insights and settings basically this planning and insights are built using the Microsoft graph toolkit you can see here planning has agenda it has my tasks uh, sorry so it has my tasks it has my meetings and my documents my recently used documents so it's, it's all centric it's related to what I want to do uh, or what I I'm interested when I'm at work. So that's the me experience. And insights are basically around all the files or uh, the documents that I'm interested in trending around me, shared with me, again, using the get component in Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And settings, basically, just to show you, you, you can store your own settings using Graph Open Extensions. You can probably add more configurations contributions are always welcome in these repositories. So if you want to add more of settings, then you could go ahead and open a PR for that. So this is what I've built and what I can show you is the manifest file. So we have for each of those tabs, we have uh, three separate web parts. And what I've done is I've added them into the static tabs for each of those web parts. So that's basically how you can get the tabbed effect 
for the personal app. And as you can see here, every single component here is built using the graph toolkit, which is which made it uh, made it really simple. So we have the agenda one, we have task, and we have the get, which basically gives you all the. So this is one of my favorite component in graph toolkit because if you don't have a particular component in the graph toolkit mind you it's also open source you could go ahead and add new components but if you don't find one then you could go ahead and add your own template which is files one here you can see and i'm passing the data that i received from the get component and then fleshing it out so yeah that's basically what i've done here and in this uh, so what i have done is i have simplified my work by reusing the graph toolkit so i really don't have to worry about the data side of things just plugged and played graph components which is brilliant the only service i've done is for the settings web part basically because it uh, refers to the open extensions so to do my crud operations on settings i have used the services for graph uh, which is basically here so you can find all this in the repository a big shout out to hoa because this um this the sample is uh has theming enabled which is basically something inspired from one of his samples as well so yeah that's basically it go ahead and check out my blog or you could go to the repository and have a look at the source code thank you so much well, Rabia, don't don't stop sharing. That was super fast, uh, much faster than uh, certainly needed. So let's go back on the solution. I will ask some questions and let's clarify yeah. why are we doing things and all of that. So first of all, on the craft services, you did a craft extension. So you did an open yeah. craft extension. Why did you do that? What what is what is actually? Can we recap on why yeah. why did you choose to use this approach for the implementation? Good question. So personal tabs. Uh, uh, do, do not have a settings uh, or a configuration panel for you like you would see in a Teams one. So if you have a Teams tab, you basically, and you're using SPFX, then you can get the web part configurations in, same as you would get in your SharePoint pages, but personal tabs do not have that. There are different ways you could implement these settings, but uh, I thought this was easier using an open extension because it's very similar to what you have the use of profile properties in SharePoint, but more graph centric, so you can basically call it anywhere. Yeah, so that's exactly why I went with the settings and, here. And just to kind of a, one one kind of a consideration, you mentioned the user profile properties in SharePoint, which is kind of a cool yeah. thing. We, if you come from yeah. a SharePoint world, you know about it. You can add an additional property. Yeah. You can stir stuff there, but you mm -hmm. cannot automate that. That's really the challenge. Yeah. But can you exactly. can you automate this one as part of the solution deployment? Yeah, definitely, because it's a graph call. So if you want, you can go ahead and use CLI for Microsoft 365. So one other question, what I what I wanted to kind of also pinpoint here is that you're using your this is a personal application. That's really cool. You can yeah. you can and, and the concept itself is absolutely brilliant. People can pull it down. They can extend that. They can repackage that and publish yeah. that to the store, by the way, if you are interested. Everything is MIT licensed. It's this is what we want you to do. But the fact that you created the manifest manually, why is that? Can we recap uh, that decision? Yeah, so because we are adding more tabs here. So for example, I, I'll open up here. So yeah, so this one is our manifest. So we need to, because we need to add all, all these web parts in uh, to the static tabs, we need to go ahead and manually do it. At the, at the moment, this is the only way we could do it. And yeah, so that's exactly why we have chosen this yeah. path. So, so basically, when if you would use the out of the box sync to Teams capability, yeah. we will actually generate an automatic manifest for all of the web parts. And in this case, yeah, it would exactly. be three different solutions. And that's not yeah, a really optimal from an end user perspective. Exactly. We want to have exactly. a really complete solution. So we're kind of yeah. building that manual manifest. And this is actually, by the way, an awesome example why we will now add an add a capability of embedding the manifest uh, inside of the SPPKT file, because yeah. That will then enable people like Rabia and the developers to include the complex manifest, like this kind of a complex configuration in the manifest, and deploy that to the app catalog and then automatically sync that to Teams. So you don't have to manually get the manifest package as a zip file together with the color, uh, the, the images, and then get it installed to the Teams, which has to be done right now with this solution. Yeah. So, yeah. Not a super optimal. Yeah, we just. Uh, and that, Sorry, the existing uh, support is not super optimal, but we will get it uh, more supported. Sorry, Rabia. Yeah, 
No, that, that's fine. I was just going to point to the documentation that Waldeck uh, added here. So it's all captured here, all the uh, things that you need to keep in mind when you are considering these tabs. So, yeah, I would suggest everyone in this call to go have a look at this very comprehensive article. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi, uh, on that one. No Relatively worries. quick one, and, and sorry for jumping in. There was just a few pointers which we wanted to talk about for the for the audience yeah. as well. It is a really, really great solution, um, and it's a really so great demo to do as well. So, awesome stuff. Awesome. Thanks. But I think yeah. we are ready to go then to Frank, and we promised Frank at least 25 to 30 minutes for you, and I think we <laughs> yeah, are... Yeah, that's perfect. perfect. That's yeah. perfect. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Franck Cornu. I'm Microsoft 55 developer and founder of the company named Ecos. Uh, today I will show you the latest uh, version of the PNP modern search called the V4. I will go through a quick introduction uh, about the, the V4 and the PNP modern search uh, solution uh, in general and uh, jump to the demo uh, for the new features. So first of all, just to uh, to start, what is the, the solution, the PNP model search for, for those who don't, who don't know already? It's a set of SharePoint Online web parts. It's only a, it's a solution available for SharePoint Online only. Uh, it's a set of web parts uh, allowing to, uh, to create like uh, highly flexible search experiences uh, within the modern experience, the SharePoint modern experience. So it includes multiple web parts like the search results, search filters, verticals, and the search box, so you can put it together to create a whole search center, for instance. For, for instance, the, um, the main goal of the solution is to enhance the, the capabilities of the out-of-the-box web parts. For instance, the highlighted content web part, which is quite limited right now in the out-of-the-box uh, uh, web parts. So the, the goal is really to offer you a set of web parts to customize your results the way you want, uh, leverage your information, uh, uh, architecture uh, from your project and build your experience the way you want. So it's an open source solution. It's maintained by the community for the community. So I'll, I want to just thank all the people who contributed to this solution since the since the beginning. So this solution was first uh, released in uh, in 2017. So the, it's uh, yeah, it's been a long uh, long time. The current version is version 3.16. And today I will show you the new version, which is the version four to present you today. So about the version four, uh, just to get started, there is really a distinction between the V3, the current V3 version and the V4, since they are not really compatible. The reason is uh, the V3 was like, uh, let's say old, it's an old code base. So it is quite complicated to, uh, to maintain and to, uh, to add new features and so on. So we decided to completely review the architecture. Um, it's very complicated to maintain the, the V3 right now. So we decided to completely reorganize the code, the architecture. Uh, and also um, we had to integrate the new Microsoft Search API. So we needed a way to, uh, to do it correctly in the code. And that's why we, we took the decision to completely start from scratch basically, but keeping some feature from V3. Not all features from V3 are in the V4 yet. Uh, there is a lot of features in the V4, uh, but not it's not complete uh, compared to the V3. First of all, if you want to download the latest release, so it's currently in preview. So go to this uh, URL, uh, PNP Modern Search within the, the Microsoft Search organization, and you will see the V4 preview. So it's a preview version, it can, uh, it can change. So don't use it for now in your production environment. So just for testing purpose and uh, it allows uh, us to, uh, to, to gather feedback and uh, fix each issues before the official release. Uh, there is a documentation also available. So I'll we'll just jump into the documentation to, uh, to give you an overview. Uh, so documentation has been completely uh, rewritten. So um, it's the main documentation of the reports targets the, uh, the V4 currently, but uh, thanks to Michael, uh, we have now a V3 documentation included in the portal. So if you use the V3, you can still see the documentation associated. So just go to the V3 tab here and we'll, you will get the, the, 
the um, the v2 documentations for uh, for the current version otherwise the uh, the, the documentation targets the v uh, the v4 like i said the v3 is not compatible with the v4 and will not be maintained in the future except for major uh, issues but the focus is now on the v4 of course and the microsoft search uh, integration so let me go back to my slides so like i said the documentation is online so go uh, I'll check, go take a look on this and your uh, feedback and issues are welcome if you find any issues please let us know uh, especially on the v4 we are trying to uh, to fix the lot of issues before the uh, the, the official uh, release so uh, feel free to uh, to go to this url and, and raise your uh, your issues about the new feature so i tried to uh, summarize all the feature we we added to the to the v4 pair uh, web parts. So the first one is the search for the web part. So basically, like I said, we refactor the old code base to be more modular. And um, essentially, we added the Microsoft Search API. So now in the web part, in the main web part, you have the Sharpen Search and you have the Microsoft Search uh, API. So I will show you in a, in a minute, but uh, this is really the, the main difference, I will say. We also added a slot feature to, uh, to define the field mapping between the layouts and the data source. I will show you also this in a, in a minute. Uh, we improved some layouts and added some options. And we support now the Microsoft Graph Toolkit uh, within the template. So for those who already use the uh, PNP Modern Search, we you know this is the handlebars template behind the scenes. So now in the HTML markup, you can use the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, and I will show you a, a concrete example of that in, in a few minutes. And also, we added a new connection and extensibility option. So basically, these are the same web parts, but the way they work together, it's quite different. So I will show you again. Regarding the search filter web parts, we added the, like the search with web part, we added the ability to create templates for filters. So you, you now you have your access to the underlying HTML markup. It's an underbar uh, template, just like the search results. So now you can customize this uh, web part as well. And we added new filters and templates for the for refiners, basically. Regarding the search verticals, it's pretty much the same thing, except the behavior has been refactored. So it's not really the same as before, because we had to support the new Microsoft Search data source. So I will show you. Also, and the search block web part, we added the multiple suggestions provider uh, to the extensibility library. Currently, in the v3, it's, you can only uh, add only one suggestions provider. Let's go to the demo and I'll show you all these new features. So, first of all, you can download, like I said, the uh, release, the latest release, the modern search v4 uh, in the PMP modern search repo. Uh, there are two SPPKG packages. Uh, the first one is the main ones for the web parts, and you have the extensibility one. The extensibility one is like the uh, shared library. It's like an NPM package, if you want, uh, but uh, it contains interfaces and uh, common uh, methods for the core web parts and also the extensibility library that we'll show you uh, later. So for your own extensions. So to use the V4, you have to, de to deploy the two packages. And also, these packages can be deployed at tenant level or site collection level. For instance, here I'm in a, a, an isolated site collection, and I have the V4 and V3 together within the same site collection. So you can deploy both uh, versions together without any conflict, because they don't share the same IDs uh, the web part IDs and so on, these are not the same. So that's why that I said that these are not compatible. This, has really, this is really two completely different packages. So, so you can deploy it together with the same app catalog. So when you deploy this package, you will still have the option to, have, to uh, um, add the web parts on your page. But the difference is, for instance, that type search result. As you can see, there are a lot of search result web parts, actually, or PNP modern search web parts. So you have the new one with the PNP uh, prefix here. This is the new ones, and the old ones are only 
search box, search features, and so on. So you can add them both on the page. Uh, I recommend you to just use one version on the page uh, for obvious reason, but uh, you can still use the V3 if you want. So I will start with the first one, the PNP search results, which is the, the, the main component of the, of the set. Um, so if I go to the um, property pane, the, as you can see, the first choice you have to make is either to use the SharePoint search or the Microsoft search API. So if I select the SharePoint search, uh, this is pretty much the same options we had in the V3 version, except uh, a couple of things like the query text connections to the search bot has been uh, moved to another property pane configuration page. I will show you uh, in a minute. And basically you have the same option for the data source and you have a common options for all data sources like the paging options and so on. So uh, if I go to the new one, I, I won't go through the SharePoint search option because this is uh, pretty uh, known stuff. So I will jump to the Microsoft search uh, API. So this is for now, this is really uh, simple, very basic, the options we have. Basically, you can search for entity types. So this is the supported entity types. I suggest you to uh, to read the documentation about Microsoft Search. Some of entities are not compatible together, so you have to make sure you have uh, uh, the correct combination between the entities. Uh, for instance, the drive items, external items, and so on. And for uh, specific entity types like external items, make sure you authorize the correct permission with the, your tenant, the API permission to get this kind of entities. And again, if you have any uh, any uh, question about it, it's really, I suggest you to really read the doc on Microsoft Search API. It's all explained what you can do with entities and so on. So the options are pretty, like I said, pretty uh, simple to selected fields, the drive items. Uh, we will add more options in the future, but we, we want to start uh, with a restrained uh, set of features to. Uh, to, to, to begin. And yeah, so the first page is data source, like I said. And if I go back to the next page, we will see the, the layout. So it's pretty much the same as the V3. Uh, we added some options and so on in, in the layouts. But the next page, yeah, all the connections to, to other web parts are moved uh, move to the connection page. So the search box, filters, and vertical, so you configure all the connection in the same property pane uh, uh, page. So let's say I want to use a, a query text. I can use a static value or a dynamic value. For now, we'll use a static value. For instance, if I uh, type the wildcat character, as you can see here, it will um, it will uh, write the it will put the query uh, here. So this query text is used in the Microsoft Search and SharePoint Search uh, data sources like mentioned here. So it's a little bit different of the, from the V3, so make sure you, uh, you use the, the correct uh, option to pass your, your query text. Another feature that uh, we add is the slot feature. As you can see, you have a layout slot for all data sources. Uh, the slots basically, I will just use another layout to make it uh, more uh, relevant. The layout slots are basically a way to map your fields in built-in layouts, the data source fields in built-in layouts. So let's say you have your data source and you want to uh, use another field for the title slots. So slots are in the built-in layouts. And so this is placeholders, basically. So you can map any data source field on this particular placeholder. For instance, in the title, I can choose to use the name. So this is the, the response of my search uh, query, or I can choose to use uh, whatever else. And as you can see, I, I just changed the value dynamically without going in the handlebar templates. So it's a, it's a quick way to to make like reusable templates uh, between SharePoint Search and Microsoft Search using the slots. And if I go to the specific handlebar template here to see what's going on here, the detail is, for instance, and I go to the column, the specific column here, as you can see, there are special handlebar helpers that will uh, look up the configure slot and output the result in the, in the column. So you can use it 
in uh, layout option or in the global uh, Thunderbolt template. Okay, so that is for the slot feature to make basically to make your uh, your layouts and templates reusable for any data source. Another improvement we've made is the Microsoft Graph integration. So to show you this part, I will just use the people layout and the people data source using the SharePoint search. So I go to the SharePoint search and now I can select a result source. So the default one is people, for instance. So I will just look up for all the people uh, in my organization. And I switch to the people layout. And I have a special option here, show personal column over. Enable this option. As you can see, uh, enable, enabling this option will see the actual picture and a card, detail card for all the people. Basically behind the scene, these are Microsoft uh, Graph Toolkit integration. So to show you the, the integration, if I go to the template, as you can see here, this is a Microsoft Graph Toolkit integration. So it means you can use this kind of components anywhere within your handlebars template. This is a concrete example, the pre-built example uh, for the people layout, but basically you can inject any context, any data from the handlebar context in your uh, Microsoft uh, Graph Toolkit components. So it's a cool option to uh, create uh, beautiful templates if you want a custom template. But remember, when you use this kind of uh, components, you have to authorize of permissions, for instance, for the people uh, layout. As you can see here, you have to authorize this API permission uh, for your tenants to, to get it work. So when you will deploy the package, you will be asked to uh, authorize this, uh, this API permission. These are not mandatory, of course, but if you don't uh, authorize them, this feature won't, uh, won't work, uh, obviously. Okay, so this is for the Microsoft Graph Toolkit integration. Next, for the extensibility option. Extensibility. So like I said, all the connections are made through the last, uh, to the, the specific, in the specific page in the property pane. So I use, for instance, an, uh, an input query text and static value, but if I want to use um, a search box, I will just add a search box on my page here. Uh, it's a one-way connection, so I go to the search result, the connection page, and now I can map the dynamic value. And from here, I can either choose the search box or page environment, for instance, a query string parameter and so on, and inject it to my uh, search result. So this is pretty much the same as V3. You can still use a default value, uh, for instance, at the, during the page load, or grab the value from a search box uh, here. So this is for the search box, pretty uh, simple. Now I will connect another web part, uh, which is the vertical web parts. I will start with the vertical web parts. I will let the, the filter web parts for the, for the end. The vertical web parts has changed for the V4. So I will add another PNP search results here. And for instance, I will choose another data source, for instance, Microsoft Search. And I will map to the search box here to dynamic value search box search query yeah great and then i will have a vertical web part so basically the vertical web parts controls visibility of connected search results web parts so i can still configure my tabs here so for instance here i created a people directory and here to showcase of Microsoft Search. You can still use a, an Office React Fabric or sorry, Fluent icon name if I want. But as you can see, there is no more query template or, or, or such options within the verticals. It's only tabs and a link if you want to uh, redirect to a specific link. So I go there. And now from my search result web parts, I can use these tabs to connect to control like the visibility. So for instance, the people web part here will only be displayed if the people tab is selected. And this particular web part, the, search, the Microsoft search web part will be displayed only if the Microsoft search tab is controlled. 
And as you can see in edit mode, you will prompt, you will be, uh, a message will be uh, displayed saying the current tab is not the one you select, you selected in the web part. So in display mode, this won't be uh, displayed. So if I save my page, you can, you can now build like uh, search experiences here just by clicking on tabs and displaying the correct PNP search result you want according to the tab. So you, this way you can really build complex queries and layouts for a specific tab. Uh, this was a limitation for the V3 because the V3 only had the option to configure the query template. Um, so this is a, an improvement in the V4, it's controlled visibility. And of course you can map multiple PNP search results to one tab. For, for now, I just uh, took the example of one one configuration, but you can still map uh, many uh, with such results to, uh, to a specific tab. So this is for the search vertical. Now I will jump to the other web parts, the filter web parts, the refiner web parts. So I will add it here, PNP filters. This one changed a lot actually, because now you can connect filters from multiple web parts. So it's uh, one too many configurations. So as you can see, I have the option to connect the um, such the two search results, and as you can see, you have the ID here of the web part. So if you don't know which is the one, the, the correct one, you can still use the ID. And if you go here on the latest page, you have the instance ID. If you want to make sure this is the right uh, web part you connect. Okay, uh, so I go there. I connect my two web parts, and I will edit my filter. So basically, you can use the fields from your data sources. So this, these are only the fields available in the current uh, response, okay? For instance, if you created a custom managed property or a refinable string, this won't show up here. And you have to type the field and press enter to uh, use it in the filters, okay? So this is not the complete list you see here. It's just uh, an help for you to, to select the right field. So let's say I will use the file type. And I, I will select a, a template. So as you can see, these are pretty much the same checkbox, combo box, and so on. I will use the checkbox for the, for the instance. And a couple of other options explained by default. And another option is the multi-value control. In the V3, V3 you had uh, one template for multi or single um, filter behavior. Now you have only one template, but it's an option in the template to select if it's multi values or not. So if I use the single value here, so I connect it, it's a two way connection. So I connect from uh, to my search result and from the search result, I need I still need to connect to the filter web part to send actually the refiner to the filter web part. So if I go there, here, and for the other one, I can go there. Oh, you have the people data. Yeah, box. okay, yeah. <laughs> the people the, don't have file type actually. <laughs> yeah, my mistake. Uh, yeah, I will select another um, data source actually. Like SharePoint people reason. SharePoint results, much better. Yeah, here we go. Sorry for the dumb, uh, <laughs> the dumb configuration. This couldn't work anyway. Uh, okay, so. I will go to a more friendly layout, like I mentioned, yeah. So as you can see, uh, you can filter a web part here uh, using the, the template and the selected field you want and connect to multiple web parts. So I'll just go through my other configuration quickly. Come on. Just want to show you thing. Okay. And I will connect to the other one. I forgot a lot of thing here. Okay, should be good. So uh, I have all my value gathered from my two web parts and I, I can now filter my two web parts uh, using the, the only, uh, only one filter web parts here. Um, so it's a new addition for V4 and I can also choose 
multi values, like I said, and the behaviors between the values. So, and is, is it an end condition or the or condition? So, if I choose, for instance, or condition, now you will add the option here to select multiple and apply multiple filters to the uh, to your web parts. So it's a new way to handle uh, fits, um, filters compared uh, to the V3 configuration. Uh, another thing I want to cover in this in this session, I have only five minutes left, so I will go quick, is the extensibility feature. So uh, in the latest last page, sorry, of the configuration, the, the property pane, you have the extensibility configuration. And from here, if I click to configure, you will see your extensibility library and the manifest ID. So the manifest ID com comes from uh, your uh, library SPFX project that you can build to enhance capabilities of the uh, built-in web parts. So in the modern search organization, you, you have now a PNP modern search extensibility sample. Okay. If you go to the develop branch, it's still a uh, work in progress, but you will have a SPFX project here, uh, it's a library component project. And from here, you can add your own extension. Extensions can be uh, custom web components, custom uh, suggestions providers for the search box, uh, custom handlebars, helpers, and uh, we are trying to implement the layouts configuration, the, the extension layout, so you can use it as a replacement of the custom renderers you add in V3. So basically, it will allow you to add your own tile here within the web part. So to use it, basically you will have to go on this repository and I will show you just here. It's a quick uh, demo. This sample provides you some uh, built-in methods that you can just use to register your own components. If you want to to know how to, uh, to do this. In the documentation, you have an extensibility uh, tab here with uh, a step-by-step -step tutorial to create all kinds of uh, extensions, so web components, suggestion provider, and so on. So the goal is really for you to, to create like uh, extension in a separate project and use it in the main web part. So this is a cool way to enhance the uh, the, the, the core web part with your customization and according to your to your requirements. So you can use it for your own project and uh, you, will, you will be fun as well. I think I'll cover pretty much it. Uh, I'm running out, out of time. So a quick recap, use the uh, V4 preview version from uh, GitHub, use it in your tenant. Use the issue tab if you have some uh, feedback and issues with, with the V4 and let, let us know uh, what you think of the uh, of this version and probably this will go out probably next year, uh, early next year, January, probably we'll still have some issue to fix, but it's pretty much stable now, but we have uh, some issue, uh, some issue to fix. So let us know what you think of this, uh, of this solution. Uh, go back to you, Vesa and Patrick. I think I'm running out of time. So thank you for all. All right. Thank you very much. Fantastic demo there. Uh, really great to see the progress on the search web parts uh, coming back together. Um, excited to get that out there for folks. A um, lot of work has gone into that. A lot of great innovation has gone into that. So great, great, great to see that finally getting out there. Encourage everyone to try that. Check that out. Let us know what kind of feedback you have. And with that, I will just say thank you again for an amazing year in community and patterns and practices uh, work. It's been wonderful working with all of you out there and amazing to see all the great work everybody's doing, the great samples, the great solutions, and just all the fantastic community involvement from everybody. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot say thank you enough. So I will not try because we'll just go out the rest of the recording saying thank you. So we'll have this recording available in about 24 hours. Follow us on Twitter. Remember, our next calls are in the new year. Our next SPFX call will be January 14th, and our next general dev call will be January 7th. So the next two Thursday calls are canceled. January monthly community call for SharePoint will be January 12th. Look forward to seeing all of you in the new year. Here's a list of all our other community calls that will continue through into the new year as well. And with that, I will just again say thank you to all of you. Have a great holiday season. Hopefully you get some time off and some time to recharge. And everybody, have a great rest of the year and see you in 2021.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.